Now, of course, the other thing that happens in minorities, uh, in, in, in feudal minorities, is that normally uh, the lordship would be leased out to farmers. Or I suppose we call them entrepreneurs today. Guys who say, I'll pay you so much for looking after this bit of real estate. And of course, they do it uh, by um, going onto the domain lands and hacking down all the woods. Uh, 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 and generally ravaging assets through them at the launch in order to meet their payments. And when you've got somebody like John who had exorbitant, uh, not only had the absolutely exorbitant reliefs and so on, and you, you can imagine that the effect on, on the uh, uh, incipient centres uh, of, of Leinster where um, very damaging uh, indeed. And of course, also, as, as Stephen mentioned, uh, John was in the habit of dishing out lands in Leinster to his own followers, including uh, Theobald Walter. And uh, there was a big row. He resisted handing Leinster back to uh, Marshall when he married Isabel. Uh, and um, it is, he struck it out. He wouldn't hand it over until he was uh, I got uh, the assurance that at least the Avon Walker lands would not be retaken into Marshall's hands, but that other lands must have been. Because Richard is said to have said, well, if you don't do that, there'll be nothing left from Marshall. That was his comment in the Histoire de Guillaume de Maréchal, the sort of chanson, from which we get quite a bit of information about this. Now, so uh, the other thing then is that. Um, so this is a lordship in, in you know this falling apart, and and also to the other problem facing Marshall was that uh, of course he faced the old baronage, the, the strongbow men who'd been there for twenty years and resented the new incomers. So just read, just read Geraldine Wells and what he has to say about the new arrivals. They're all sort of centered courtly types. They're not real soldiers, they're only half men. So that, that's the kind of mentality you're dealing with. So um, in order for Marshall to put Leinster back on the map, he had an enormous task to, to achieve. And um, the first thing would have been to settle his own followers. Now, can I ever get this gadget to work? Um, this, I see, I have an Oh, I don't know. It keeps going on. I, I'll bring it forward. Can you bring it forward for me? Yes, do, please. I want to get the Kenny. This one, is it? Uh, well, you, I, I'll talk. No, no, not this one. Well, no, no, stay with that one. Stay with that one. Those are the, those are the old Strongbow domains. Strongbow's domain focused mainly in Wexford. It was easy. It was accessible to the sea from Pembroke. And these are the domain lands that were attached to Strongbow's state. Minus, of course, a new Ross hadn't been invented. But old Ross had. So those were the, the heartland. Nine is out there is, of course, Ferns, the lordship of Ferns. So um, that, that's the heartland of Strongbow's, of his domains. Uh, turn on to the next one. Uh, so then, uh, interestingly, uh, Carlo, um, Strongbow handed out the whole of it to his vassal without apparently reserving any land to himself. Carlo was not yet, Carlo was included in the Lordship of Ogarki, which was John de la Tam. So it was not, it was not Strongbow's. And the rest of, of Carlo was eventually Marshall got lucky, the Lordship of Fort, which was Raymond and Rose. Raymond had no legitimate um, uh, successors, and it eventually passed back by way of a street to, um, to Marshall. Uh, we, I think he got Carlo either through a straight purchase from de Clahal, or possibly, more likely, I think, de Clahal might have been involved in the baronial revolt against Marshall in 1207. And this was part of the penalty he had to pay. And Marshall would have appreciated that he had to have uh, he had to have a presence on the barrow and a centre in the upper barrow region. It was an absolute must 
for governing the interior of this vast lordship. Can we get to Kilkenny? <coughs> well, that's, that's, now, here in Kilkenny, you have uh, two things that Marshall did. First of all, he settled um, his, his, um, his household knights. It was the only place left in the lordship where there was land going a bed. So that's why I think Marshall concentrated on Kilkenny. And so if Robert, um, Robert Fitzgeoffrey, who, who served him very faithfully, and he acted as a hostage for Marshall uh, against King, for, for King John. Um, and uh, you had in, in, in um, here in Thomas Town, you uh, Thomas, uh, what do you call um, Somebody deliver me from myself. Uh, Thomas Fitzgeoffrey. And, and there was Mallard and John de Early, and they were all settled in, 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 in lordships here in South Central, well, Central Kilkenny, around Kilkenny, if you like. Uh, Oskelen is, uh, is, is, is Fitzwater territory, Butler, Mallard. But not Butler, whatever he was, he wasn't belonged to the old stronghold guard. So probably quite loyal to me. Marshall then built up his domain here. They're horizontally striking a whole string of manors, very wealthy manors. And he also occupied the northern reaches of the county, Offer Lane and Ackerbow. He acquired Ackerbow by a swap with the Bishop of Ossory. So obviously they had great strategic significance with the Fitzpatricks up there, and you had the O'Brennans here, and somebody had to keep in watch for the Isle. But this area of was not so heavily or densely set as the type of military occupation which Stephen was talking about. So that's how um, that's how Marshall began to sort of he had to occupy the ground, otherwise he could never have exercised lordship. 